Hey TV fans, Bored now back with you on this video. I will be reviewing Fatal Attraction Episode 5. It is called Med Dial Woman. <laughs> Full spoilers from the start of this review. So this is another decent episode. I don't think it's one of the better episode. This is the sort of episode where the sexism of the movie, which unfortunately still exists to a certain extent in the TV show, I think just starts to show through a bit too much. So that's probably the main weakness of the episode, as we see more to do with Alex. Her psyche and her just unravelling and the effect it has on Dan, and just how he starts to pay more for having the affair in the first place which he reveals to Beth but there's just certain signs of sexism in this episode I think some of the stuff with with Alex and the way she acts but but also with stuff like you have the representative who's like investigating Dan and the complaint which is something they feel they have to investigate at work and they suggest that he he's, he goes home and doesn't come into the office until it's all sorted out but the woman investigating him is the one who has claimed that she finds him to be sexist and the way he, he practices law and so it's implied that there's a vendetta against him from her but at the same time his boss is saying things like because she doesn't really like you that's why she would be a good one to investigate which in some ways doesn't really stack up because there is a bias there but you can kind of see what she's saying saying in the scene that maybe she's more likely to to like judge in a fair way because she has no kind of bias like for him like she she will take this stuff seriously but you could certainly read it another way as saying yeah that that probably doesn't make her the best but she is impartial but the whole thing is that Alex gets him off like Alex actually Brett vouches for him like when when she talks about that night in the bar it's actually her who 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 gets Dan off because she, she vouches for his human qualities, and that because of that the the, the complaint can't really be be false. And so the woman comes back to him and and says like it it's it's your friend who who saved your ass in this case, and and also there's there's stuff where Alex. Before she's even taken the te the pregnancy test, because it's in this episode, it's revealed she thinks she could be pregnant. But she says to the woman, I I'm pregnant, I'm expecting, keep it quiet. So that's another way to, like, get her on, on her side, it seems. And, and, like, make her sympathetic. And we see her take the test in this episode. And the way that all plays out means that she she has a certain reaction to things and like she starts going after um sorry go going after Dan even more and this is where some of the stuff from the film which can partly be excused because it's like an 80s film is unfortunately still in the TV series and it's definitely stuff they could have like improved upon and and tweaked certain things here and there to, to make it a little bit more moving with the times and a, a bit more less problematic so that's definitely the weakness of the episode overall it's still a pretty tight episode and it's still quite enjoyable to watch certain things come together we see the flip side of what actually happened to Beth's mother and, and that is of course Alex so Dan believes that she was trying to steal something. That's why she was at the house, which is a plausible enough theory. But we see then it was her who killed the mother. And it's sort of wrong place at the wrong time. But we see that it was her who, like, 
with the gate so it was her who originally came through the gate and like originally she bonds with the mother and we just see that it it, it just takes some some stuff from the mother because she invites her in for a drink because she kind of like saves her ass with, with the whole gate thing with the coffee so she befriends her but it's a, originally meant to be a coffee and then they're drinking wine and they're sort of talking about their lives and Alex starts here here hearing about the mother's upbringing and stuff and it's just as she starts hearing more about the whole family life and, and her background that Alex starts getting into like getting into her sort of like glazed over eyes type thing and, and she starts going into a, a different sort of zone and yeah we see the, the sort of eyeballs going and how she's ha like the mother's having problems with with the pool with the swim pool and once again all this has been set up with certain rules but Alex just takes a turn at one point where the mother like falls in and, and she's not a very good swimmer but she Alex rather than helping her she like presses the button which covers up the pool and, and that's how she suffocates and then we see the the thing with the dog who's who's in the other yard and and Dan just knows this and and that it's at that point where he, he chooses to reveal about the affair because he just knows that Alex is the one involved at one point he's talking to Mike about getting the FBI involved for like protection and, and Mike is saying no that's not a good idea they probably wouldn't agree to it anyway they probably wouldn't see it as being like seriously enough and Mike is there's not a lot of him in this episode but he again is on good form I quite like his line about yeah, well, how? Why don't you just kill her? And it's a funny line because he means it as a joke, and I like the delivery of the line. But it's also just funny because this is the episode where we see what actually happens with that, and it just plants the seeds that maybe Dan is starting to go over the edge a bit, and, and that maybe he could consider killing her. So. There's quite a bit of tension later on when the daughter Ellen goes missing because the mother falls ill and then has to go to hospital. Oh yeah, sorry, there's an incident at her workplace. So we see her getting closer to her work colleague who in the future she's now seeing, she's in a relationship with and... His wife is, of course, ill, so she's there to support him. Because after Alex, sorry, Dan tells her about the whole affair, it, it's like, yeah, I just need to be at work and I need to, you to look after the place. And it's like Dan, Dan has no real choice. He's sort of screwed up, even though she's pretty much decided she's divorcing him. It's like she expects him to to stay there and keep things running and, and look after the daughter. Also, the father's still there who's just l lost his wife. So she's sort of saying for appearances, we've got to pretend that the marriage is, is okay because the father has this line to Dan where it's like, if you, was, if you weren't around and if you two weren't like a couple, I, I, don't, I don't know what I would do type thing. So she goes off to, to work at, at some point and her like future partner, Dan, um, I think his name's Frank, he's, he's having like a blow up at work because of this construction guy who like, in his opinion, screwed up. And the guy's a bit, a bit of a douche, but like Beth is really good in the scene. Like she really puts things in perspective and like stands up to the guy. But sh she's also tells Frank to like go and call off because this isn't helping but she also calls the construction guy out on his bullshit but it's at this point that Alex sets a fire at the workplace because we see her taking the pregnancy test and she's nearby and, and the result 
just set her off and she decides to set the fire like go after the wife and it's at that point where Beth has to go to hospital they're worried about Ellen because there's no place like there's no one to pick her up off the school bus and we find out that there's a neighbour's house she can go to apparently but she she they're worried that they then she or then she should know but then they hear from the neighbors and she hasn't shown up there so they're worried that then alex has taken her and they mike ends up finding ellen and then bringing her home but we do hear that she was with someone so they're pretty sure it's alex so that's when dan goes after alex and, and like threatens her breaks into her home and 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 at one point she like pleads ig- ignorance because she mentions about she, she 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 met Mike and but she she saw sort of pleads ignorance and then she she didn't really do anything or then she wouldn't do anything and just plays it kind of cool at one point but the cracks start appearing throughout the episode and. We appear to get our answer by the end of the episode and he is on the verge of maybe killing her. He chokes her out nearly, but then she like he snaps out of it and and he, he has the line about like you're in trouble, I'm coming after you now, I'm gonna have you arrested, but if you want to kill yourself, you're going to have to do it yourself. So it's implied that that line maybe seals what she then does. Because we cut back to it later and there's like blood on the floor. So so it's definitely implied that even though he didn't kill her, what he says to her maybe has that impact and she ends up taking her own life. There could still be another twist, but we we do end with the blood on the floor, so there's a good chance, and that's what's happened. They also start getting more like dirt on her when it comes to complaints at work. They try to get the guy who made the complaint about her to like help Dan out with some information, but he doesn't really like Dan, like, and and he's not he's just because of the stuff with Alex and maybe thinking that he might have had something to do with her death he he doesn't want to help Dan out doesn't want anything to do with him but then another friend of his does like they go to dinner and and he actually gives them some stuff they can use uh, against her and then there's just other like just more history more stuff when it comes to complaints and and just a little bit more which would help their their case when when it comes to a retrial there's also stuff with the daughter like this new friend she's made where so they start getting closer and like the friend mentions about being a criminal and she also mentions about how she's been seeing the professor because they're both students at the same place and they're both on the same course and because she, she seems to know a lot about the feces which the daughter the daughter Ellen has been taking and she questions how this is and she says it's because she's been sleeping with the professor and, and Ellen's like oh okay and they sort of have a laugh about it but then later on when she goes to see the professor and that they have like a session together she she just slips it in there and mentions I'm not going to say anything but I know like it's on my mind I can't really say anything and you sort of wonder where they're going with this because he he is like doesn't really sell it like he implies he doesn't know what she's talking about and it makes you wonder if the friend is making it up for some reason or if it's just one of these things and, and like he's seeing the friend but that's kind of yeah I, I, I don't know yet where they're going with this storyline whether it's the friend who's making this stuff up maybe they're going to do a similar thing with like what's happening with Alex and happened with her and Dan 
and it's implied like this could turn into a bit of a toxic affair which is obviously very shady because of the age difference if 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 it is the truth to begin with so it's another storyline it's it's looking a little bit iffy i've got to say but that's fatal attraction for the week anyway it's it's not a bad episode it's just as i said some of the sexism does stand out a bit more in this episode than it has with the others so let me know your thoughts in the comments below like and subscribe as always and I'll be back with more TV reviews soon. Thanks guys, see you later.